Hey folks, welcome back to another Battling Brushes. Rob and I are continuing our series on painting Blood Bowl, the uh, two-player sports fantasy type of game from Games Workshop. It's really what fantasy football should be. <laughs> anyway, this week I'm going to be taking care of the Orc Thrower and Rob is going to be taking care of the Human Catcher. <laughs> Humans, they need catchers. We oxes don't need those. Anyway, we are having a lot of fun getting these guys painted. They're great miniatures to paint. Um, I'm really enjoying it a lot. So without further ado, let's get down to the table. We'll show you how we did these two guys. So we're getting started with the uh, thrower for the orc team today. And um, he has a lot of different kinds of colors on him. Uh, but we're going to stick with the basic palette that we've already been using for the rest of our team. Which basically is for these sashes, sashes and stuff like that that are on the thing. And his arms. I've been just doing them in regular like leather brown. So I'm going to continue doing that for this guy just so that there's uniformity there. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. Now the thing that we're going to do differently for this guy is we're actually going to start with the Urshan Gray for his undershirt over here because there's more of it showing and so I want to make sure that we get it covered nice and well uh, to bring out that color and then we'll start layering the greens and the reds and all that kind of stuff all over this model. So we're going to start with the Urshan Gray. Let's get to it. Now with the uh, orc thrower, we're going to start with a war boss green instead of the darker color that we were starting with the other ones, Wall Flesh. And then we're going to use a um, a green tone to uh, darken it up a little bit. But we're going to start with that lower, uh, with a lighter rather color. What we did last time is we were doing the base coat of Wall Flesh and then just highlighting a war boss green. But now, since I want him to be a little bit of a lighter skin color, um, we're gonna start with War Boss Green and then fill in the recesses with that green tone. And he should have a little bit of a different look than the rest of the guys. We've got that uh, ink settling into those recesses and drying. We're going to go ahead and hit the red parts of the armor so that uh, we can kind of get that done and taken care of before we move on. I'm going to be using a Mephiston red, which is what we've been using with the other models as well. So again, we're just trying to keep that uniformity. Now that we have all the red cut in um, and the green there, you'll notice that I didn't do his hand over here, and that's because I'm going to do the ball, and it'll I think it'll be easier for us to do that hand green after the ball has already been painted. So that's why he still has that um, black hand there. But now we're going to go ahead and take the Ustabi bone, and we're going to uh, do his britches. Um, found out that he has a little hole in his britches there, so went ahead and painted that one green before I hit the Ustabi bone. So let's go ahead and get it done. And now that we've got his britches done, even with the uh, 
uh, the seraphim sepia wash over it we're going to go ahead and get to the um, brown leather uh, things that are all over his sash his uh, little loincloth whatever it is all the straps that are going around his bracelets um, everything on the back wear a belt and everything like that so let's get to that Just a few touch-ups here and there. Uh, that's pretty much it. We went ahead and did a, a scrag brown for the football, I guess you want to call that that. And then the stitches were in Ustabi bone uh, with uh, just a very, very light touch of seraphim sepia over them to give them a yellowish look. Uh, the teeth were just a regular white rune fang steel for the metal metallic parts there and we did a very slight dry brush on the red with that same rune fang steel uh, to give it that that red armor the metallic look that it needs and uh, the evil sun's scarlet uh, for the eyeballs so uh, that's pretty much it that's the orc thrower perfect as always sam great job love the orcs uh, they look fantastic and intimidating too. The Orcs are really a tough team. But today we are just taking and we are doing those highlights. Now if you remember last week how I talked about how we kind of really darkened up that model. Now we just kind of want to go over with the same colors that we used to, to do the base on it. But leave, those, leave the wash in there in, in the recesses. And just go over and bring those colors back up and leave those recesses nice and dark on the inside so we get a more realistic type of look to it. So we're going to do that today. So let's head down to the table and see how it turns out. Okay, so instead of showing you guys how to paint yet another guy in the same basic type of scheme, I figure I'd take this week just to take some time to go over... Um, highlighting certain areas. As you see that wash really darkens them up and what we want to do is we kind of want to bring a little bit of this guy back. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Calador Sky and we're going to go over all these areas that really got darkened in by the wash but we don't want to take out any of the um, any of the uh, wash that got inside the recesses. So let's uh, get that done and then we'll come right back. Okay, so we got the blue in there. Now we're going to touch up the flesh and the gloves. And that's going to be key because that's really going to help him stand out. So let's get to it and we'll see how it looks after that. By taking uh, the Tuscor fur and the Keslib flesh, as you can see, just going over certain areas, it starts to bring the model out. And you can see in his gloves and everything like that, and especially his shoes, how just not taking the wash away completely, but just hitting the high spots really makes a big difference. And I think where this is really going to show is when we do our next color, which is the Scar White. So let's give that a go and see how it all turns out. So then, as you can see, we put a little white on the helmet. Uh, we did some on the shirt here to bring it out a little bit. And then we took some XV88, which is kind of a light brown. I think it's Beastle Brown in Citadel right now. Um, and we went over the belt a little bit, around the knee pads, and, of course, the ball a little bit to give it a little bit more uh, color and depth. 
So we got this guy right where we want, and uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Next, we're going to talk about bases, and we're going to go over on the two different types of bases that you can do with the, these guys. Um, and there's a reason why, so I'll explain it to you once we uh, do it. So until next week, uh, why don't we send it up top and get on out of here. Well, there you have it, Sam. We're all set for this week. Next week, we're going to go over bases. There's two ways that you can do bases, and I'm really going to go over that. So let's go take a look at that next week. Why don't you take us on out of here, and uh, let's call it a week. So that's Battling Brushes for this week. Rob, you, sir, are doing a great job as well. Um, as always, uh, you are a master. Anybody who watches Rob knows that he is this machine, painting machine. And uh, so if you haven't checked out his channel, you should. He's got a lot of good stuff over there as well. And he also does a lot of good work here on the Dice Tower. So we, of course, appreciate everything that he does uh, for us. And he has a great channel of his own as well. Him and his family do wonderful things over there. So uh, next week, we're going to be doing a little bit of a different kind of episode. We're going to be uh, basically focusing on the bases of the models themselves and how we're going to dress them up a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you uh, just what I did with the Orc Blitzer. I'm not going to have any painting or anything like that. Most of the episode is going to be on basing. And again, this is going to be uh, basic basing, <laughs> if I can use that terminology, because... Um, we're, we're, we're coming from the low end of the spectrum. We're not looking for tournament quality uh, miniatures or anything like that, just table quality. So if you can hold it at arm's length and say, yeah, that looks great. That's what we're shooting for. And I think really my opinion, that's what everybody should be shooting for. You don't have to be able to put your model into a museum. Uh, this is meant for playing games on a table. So that's what we're gonna be doing next week. Until then, We'll see you guys on the flip side, and thanks so much for joining us. Take care. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.